Hey everyone, this is a short introductory video. We're going to go over how to access your characters, what some of the general controls look like, and how you can do things. We're going to see things from both the Dungeon Master and from the player view. As you can see right now, I'm on the Dungeon Master screen. That's our calendar. So now I'm going to go ahead and flip over and show you from the player view. Alright, from the player view right now, I'm able to control all three of these characters. See them over here in the player panel, which you can open and close to be able to see all your players. You can go ahead and open your character's character sheet right like this and make updates to them from what's in D&D Beyond by clicking on the D&D Beyond button up there, which will open up a dialogue and you can import your stuff. I've just updated these so we don't need to do it at present. You can see your inventory of equipment, your stats, your attributes, various features, your spell book. Now you'll notice that you can see all the spells that you have, have knowledge of. You can actually add things and make them available to you by clicking on the little star to make sure that they're prepared. You'll see effects that are currently impacting your character or things that are in effect for you. And you have enough room in there to modify and update your biography. Uh, you also have the short rest and the long rest buttons, which are right here on your character sheet. But that's not all. Zoom in and go ahead and see your token. This mouth is right here as an example. We have a handful of buttons here. The top shows you the armor class, and the bottom shows you current hit points. This section right here shows you if you were flying, your altitude. The little target shaped button does in fact cause you to target or untarget something. This is to assign status effects. If you have an effect that takes place, then you can go ahead and account for that to keep track. I have introduced a degree of automation that should help automate some of these processes. And the sword, swords and shields are the toggle combat status. We'll get to that in just a moment. You'll notice new from last time is this arrow. It's a switch speed, so if your character has more than one mode of movement, it'll appear here and you can select it. It lets you toggle between them. There are some default settings that go ahead and do some things for us as well. We're going to zoom out here. Uh, you can also access your character sheet by double clicking on your token. And you'll also notice when we get into the combat, up here in the top right corner, you have kind of a quick select for all the things that you can do. Most of them. There are a few things that you might not be able to access here. Additionally, you can still control and do things for your character from D&D Beyond. If you go into your character sheet, you can still execute actions from within the D&D Beyond character sheet, provided you have the uh, Beyond 20. Beyond 20, go ahead and set up. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and prepare for some con. We're going to go ahead and go over the controls a little further. Up here you have the token controls. The little broken square is to select your token. Next one down here is target. You'll know you've targeted something because of the arrows around it. We have a measuring tool. You can see the calendar current day and time. You will probably notice that uh, once I unpause the game, you'll see that that is actually moving. Go over here to the DM screen, and I'll unpause the game. Go back to our player. You'll see that the clock is running. It accounts for the current date and time in the game. Down here you have Find My Token. will take you to your current selected token. And we're not going to worry about the sequencer or the show sequencer effects database. Next down here is our templates. It allows you to go ahead and place templates. Uh, you can remove a template by just going hover over it and pressing delete. So there's a circle, a cone, and a square, and a straight line ray. 
will be automatically selected when you cast a spear with a spell with an area of effect. Next we have our drawing tools that allow you to select a drawing, draw a square, draw a circle or ellipse, uh, draw a polygon object, uh, to draw freehand, or to write and draw text on the screen. Next is an addition we've added notes. You'll see corresponding over here in the notes section. For the instance the troll scroll in, you can open this up. Press edit, edit the description. Over here is the edit button for the notes themselves. It'll take just a moment. Now you can edit to your heart's content. You can also copy and paste your notes into uh, the note journal. It's shared by all the players. You also have the ability to create note journals. And then we have our sequencer layer, which I'm not going to worry too much about. Alright, back over here to our players. Let's go ahead and untarget that old guy there. And get set back up here. So now we're going to do a quick run through over here on the, on the on top right hand side. You see the chat log is the first button. You'll see the current encounter. You've already seen the players. The items directory. Journal entries. Uh, you'll also see anything for books that I've imported and shared to the players. Rollable tables. Card stacks that I've shared. Any music controls that I've shared for you guys. Uh, you'll see my compendiums. And then you'll also see over here where you can configure settings. For our purposes of our game, we'll still be using Discord for voice and for chat for, uh, well, for voice. We can chat here in the game. All right, now we're going to go ahead and move into a combat encounter, so we'll go ahead and zoom back a little bit. Going over to the DM, I'm going to go ahead and add some monsters to the encounter, make that visible, and you'll see them populate into the encounter. I'm going to go ahead and roll, well, go back to the players, select your player, Go ahead and select the toggle combat state and it will add them to the combat encounter. Now you'll see that nobody has rolled initiative yet. Put the DM screen. And I will roll for all the monsters. Now from the player perspective, you'll be able to come over here, click on the die, and get your initiative. You'll also see that it automatically puts everyone in initiative order feature when I press begin combat, it's going to go ahead and pop out the combat tracker, pull it off to the side. You'll see that the time has changed and the way it progresses, it's going to go round by round so it keeps track of us. When we're in a combat state, we're not happening in real time. Alright, uh, you'll see a faint orange glow on the bad guy whose turn it currently is. It corresponds with where we are on the combat round. Select him. It's going to advance. You'll see that we've added the ability to go ahead and measure distance. Shows that. He's going to now target this character right here. From his inventory, he's going to use his axe. You'll see that it goes ahead, executes that attack, calculates that he missed. If he had a hit, it would go ahead and apply damage. We'll move to our next combat. Next 
All right, on the player view, currently Balthazar's turn. He's currently in combat, and you'll see that when I move him or goes to attack, he's going to actually turn face. Oops. See, I forgot to actually select my target, and it missed our roll. We rolled a 21, 6. That's okay. So we can go back in here as the DM. I can help correct that. If I hit select as the DM, I can then come in here and I can apply the damage. Go back to our player. Now if we look on our D&D Beyond, it'll tell us that Balthazar only makes one attack per round. So it looks like he's probably done this round. his turn, combat will move over to the next guy. We'll move up, target, select, attack, nice and quick and easy. Let's check and see if we oh, created the potential. He's going to use shield as a counter. Reaction. And now he has shield in effect. Type who has three attacks per round. This guy's no joke. He's gonna start by attacking this guy. Let's see, he has a weapon. Let's see, he applied the damage and killed him. He's gonna target his next bow. Attack roll. It's enough damage to do some harm, but didn't even kill him. He's going to use the attack on the same one, and that kills him. You see the damage was applied, and the character was marked dead. That completes his turn, and then we'll move up to the next character, one of the orcs. tired of messing with this whole thing. Make sure that he is selected, not just targeted. For him, he is going to go and use a spell. We're going to select a fireball, cast spell, and he can capture almost all of these guys within the range. You see that it tells us who's targeted. We'll go ahead and apply the spell. Effect will be normal. You see that it applies the damage, calculates how many hit points are remaining, and it rolls their saving throws. It counts for everything. We'll end his turn. Let's see him from the DM's perspective that most of the orcs are dead now. The rest of these guys are probably pretty unhappy with the overall situation. And they, at this time, will choose to surrender, ending our combat. I have the option to go ahead and create a loot table, transfer this to lootable, which will create a notes entry over here. see that you can actually select all the possible loot that you can potentially distribute amongst the players. You see a slight bug in the players currently represented. Go ahead and close that. It's not a feature that I plan on using a lot of. And that's really about it. One last thing to note for the players. You can note down at the bottom. This 
feature allows you to go ahead and quickly zoom in and keep track of your character. It shows you your armor class as well as your passive perception, so you can usually keep track of those things. And uh, that's about everything, folks. Hopefully you find this useful and it helps us speed through our combats as we're playing the game. Hope to see you guys on game night.